Hi everybody, welcome to a new tutorial from Sound for More. It's Leo speaking. And in this video, I'm going to show you how you can use the sequence of inside um, flow tones. It should be straightforward, but sometimes a tutorial helps. Please don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done that already, as it helps the channel to grow. So I'm inside the UM, I have created an audio channel and I have instantiated flow tones as an audio unit instance. So let's go to um, the load of the different programs and let's click here where it says search and let's search for something like plug. Um, and let's uh, uh, click all here. So because otherwise the filter will be applied only to one of the category. As you can see, it has searched through all categories, all libraries, and it found something that uh, um, contains plug. So let's uh, pick up plug loop one and let's click OK. Now, um, as you recall, you have um, part one, part two, modulation effects, sequencer and output. And I showed these uh, uh, very quickly in one of the previous tutorial. Now let's go to sequencer. Here is where I already started to create um, a little bit uh, of uh, a pattern for the sequencer. So first of all, you activate or deactivate the sequencer here. Okay. Then you have um, here the number of bits, okay, which you can increase or decrease which is not quite nice because you can go also to not even bits, which uh, might help depending on what you are trying to compose. Then you have grid size, which is very useful because you can have a snap to grid, which helps a lot. And then in this case, because BPM, because we are inside the AUM, the bits per minute is overridden by the host, which in this case is AUM. So as you can see, you have a pattern here. So if I click on the keyboard, you will hear the pattern played relative to that uh, key that I pressed because it t the sequencer uses the key that I pressed to then determine the offset or transposition up and down to play the pattern. So, okay, that makes sense. So the notes are not absolute. They are relative to the notes that uh, you are playing on the keyboard. Now, <clears throat> um, at the moment, I have selected this icon here where uh, it, it practically allows you to play notes and activate them as, um, as you need to. Or you can have it controlled by the host, clicking that, and you can see that uh, it is moving according to the tempo that the host uh, um, has uh, configured. But for the purpose of this tutorial, let's keep it to be triggered by keys that I pressed on the keyboard inside Flow Tones. Okay, so how do you create uh, a pattern? Well, double click and you create a note. Now, the reason that it is snap to the grid is because I have this function here, which is uh, you can use this to snap. Okay, so if you don't have it active, then you can see that I can move freely. Okay. If I activate that, then you can see that this snaps to the grid and the grid is determined here by the grid size. Okay, so you double click on some on a step that you created or a note and you delete it. You click to select it and then you can click on the arrows left and right to change the size. As you can see, you have here also the velocity at the center. If you click and hold, you can move the note wherever you like. Okay, that is pretty straightforward. Now, there is an interesting function here, which is lock. If you lock it, you can't change any more the notes. But if you click and hold the move up and down, you can change the velocity, which is really, really nice. So let's um, remove that. Now, you can click this X and will delete. Uh, it will delete the selected note. This is to uh, select all the notes, but of course, what you can do is click outside, click and hold, and you can use the lasso to select the different notes as you like. You can uh, select some notes, copy them, and then use this button here to paste them as well. So very straightforward. Now, there is also an interesting function, which is really, really nice, which is uh, this one here, which allows you to have mono so it will not allow overlapping of notes. So if I click this one and I move it, look what happens. Very interesting. So let's remove the snappy. 
the snap to the grid. Look, see, it will change the duration of this note to ensure that they are not overlapping because I've selected these that stand for mono notes. So that's very, very handy if you want to avoid um, uh, problems, particularly when you have um, mono presets. Now, a couple of other things. Here you have an interesting uh, uh, horizontal bar. So if you click and hold the right at the end here, click, you can see, you can expand it. In terms of zooming in, you can click and hold, and now you can move it like so. And then you can grab the end of the, at the end here and zoom in the direction out again. And you can do the same this way as well. Now there is a button here, which uh, has vertical lines. If you click and activate that, it will allow for non-uniform zoom. So let me show you what I mean. Click and hold here, move, look. The notes will not disappear here. It's zooming in this part to make the zooming out this part. So it's a non-linear zoom and it's quite in quite handy because if you want to do to do very microscopic changes you can still see the notes uh, in distance here so it's really really nice really like this feature and you can click uh, again on it to disable okay so i hope you enjoyed uh, the tutorial and you found it uh, useful on how to use the sequencer in flow tones okay see you next time bye